Hi, welcome back. So I have an interesting project for us to do today. So I have here on the right side of the screen a stick, and it's made of metal. And some of you might be able to identify this as a tuning fork. So what a tuning fork is, I'm sure as you know, you, you slap it on the table and it makes a sound. And that sound is a consistent frequency. So this particular tuning fork is tuned to 440 hertz. So if I smack it on the table, and I get it over here next to the microphone, you can hear that it's making a very nice sound, very consistent sound. So today I figured that we'd take this and we would model it in FreeCAD, and then we can use the FreeCAD FEM finite element method workbench to evaluate the frequency of it. So let's get started. So this video is two steps. The first step is going to be modeling this particular fork, and then the second step will be simulating it in FreeCAD. So to begin modeling it, I'm going to make a new folder and switch over to part design, create a body. And then the goal for this is I'm going to start out with a, uh, a circle. I'm going to extrude out and around. So this would be a loft, this uh, particular shape here. And then this bit on the end, this handle section, fits really well into a kind of revolve area. So make a sketch like that and revolve it around. So that is the plan for the beginning of the video. So I'm going to start by modeling it. So come over here and I'm going to grab a line and then a second line, and connect the two together with a curve. All righty, and I'll put the center of the curve at the origin. Oops. Grab the origin, center, and the curve can be tangent with both of these other bits, and the kind of arms of the fork can be equal. And I'm going to give myself some uh, lines here so that I can kind of easily dimension from the outside of this, because this particular uh, drawing has to be dimensioned from the center of the tube. And, you know, that's kind of difficult. So in this drawing here, like I can measure to the outside, but it's kind of difficult to measure to the center. So I'm adding myself in some extra geometry here to simulate the outside. So this particular set of geometry is going to be symmetric about the end of the pipe. And for this one, get myself a point, this point horizontal with the origin and my guiding lines symmetric and then i'll make my two guides equal and i guess this will be the first dimension i need to know the diameter of the pipe so come over here and i am measuring a 4.48 is the diameter of the pipe so I'll type that in there. And I think I need one more guiding line here to help me oops, uh, dimension kind of from one side to the other. All righty. We got that set up. We can dimension the distance from one side of this to the other side. And let's see, a 
17.75 looks like. Alrighty, and I think we just have one dimension left here, the overall length of this. So I'm going to dimension from here to here. And this is kind of a, uh, a difficult dimension to pull off this part um, because you're kind of over here measuring towards this section that you know, you can't really measure to, but I'll try my best. Looking at it, 84.74, 84.74. Okay, we'll close this. And then I'm going to create a plane. And this is going to be the plane that I'm going to draw the circle on that gets lofted over this region. So I need the plane to be at the end of one of these two points. There sounds fine. All right. And I make a sketch on this plane and I'm going to hide the plane. And for this sketch, we just need a circle. We come over here. I guess I, I have the diameter from before, but you know, can't hurt to uh, measure it again. See how accurate we are. 4.48 once again. So I'd say that's fairly accurate. Come down here, switch over to the diameter tool. 4.48. Okay and we can exit that sketch. And then I'm going to grab the uh, loft tool. I guess it's the loft equivalent tool. And I will add this edge, this edge, and that edge. Oops, I guess I need the, the add edge button again. Hmm. It's doing something funky. Let's, uh, let's cancel out of that and uh, Let's make sure that we don't have anything selected. Okay. So we want sketch 001. And for the profile, I want, oops, nope, for the path to sweep along, I want sketch. Let's see, did it take that? It did not. Okay, sketch. There we go. That's looking better. Okay hide the datum plane, and we have one sketch that's not hidden, so I'll hide that too. And then moving on to the kind of stem handle bit, I'm going to bring back the origin and put a sketch on this one. Okay, I will hide the origin now. And I need to grab the, I guess, the portion where this this loft passes through um, my sketch. So we'll see if we can grab that with the, the grabbing things tool. Um, looks like we grabbed that, but that's not quite what I want. Um, so we'll, we'll come back over here and we'll grab it off the sketch we had before. So this will be the center of it. And then I suspect ooh, ended up over there or something. How interesting. Okay. Well, looks like it wants to be on that side for whatever reason. So we'll, uh, I guess we will do this part manually. I will grab myself a line here and grab this. And even though it shows up over there, I suspect that it is the correct length. So we'll make these two equal and horizontal. And you see those two things line up pretty well. Grab myself a circle. And let's see, I go back and check and see what our diameter was. 
from the pipe. Oops, the other pipe. And let us see. It was 4.48. So come back over here. I will split the sketch again. And diameter, 4.48. OK. And then I'm going to make both of these lines construction geometry. Um, because they're just here to help me line up the rest of this. So for this, I want kind of a little, a little helping hand so that the two pieces get merged together. And then this section. And let's see, one final bit. Grab this tool from here to there, like that. And this and that we will make horizontal. Oops. This and that. Okay. So now let's just quickly form this into approximately the correct shape. Okay. And we will get us some dimensions here. So the diameter of the ball section, we can measure that, and let's see, it is 9.05, so 9.05, and then grab the diameter of this, uh, I guess, second kind of a bigger section. So that would be this. Let us see. This one here is 5.49. And it is not like that because we have constrained something um, in a way such that it doesn't appreciate that. So I'm going to do the all simple trick of uh, deleting it and putting it back. Okay. And let's grab that number again. So 5.49, once again, 5.49 divided by 2, since this is a radius. And then this last dimension is a little bit tricky, but uh, we'll try our, our best on it. So I'm going to come over here and attempt to grab this dimension at the very tip of my calipers. So a 4.34. 4.34. Oops. Does not like that. Let us try it again. 4.34. Oh, we forgot our divide by 2. So it was it was trying to put it outside of the circle, you know, up here. And obviously it can't solve for that. So that's why it was upset on that one. So then we need the overall length of this section, which should be relatively easy to measure, although you do have to do some eyeballing. So let us see. It is approximately the correct length at 37.97. Okay. And then lastly, I believe, is just the length of this little drafted bit. Um, so we'll just eyeball that. And for this one, I'm actually going to measure the kind of length of the draft along the draft as opposed to the length of the draft horizontally. Um, but it looks like we've got a 5.41 is the length there. So 5.41 and we can see that it is fully constrained. So then we get to play roulette and see if it picks the right direction to revolve around. Uh, this looks pretty cool. 
Looks like a spaceship, but it's not quite what we were looking for. That looks better. Okay, so this is our tuning fork. And I do think that this is approximately uh, correct. You can see it, it matches up pretty well with my camera here, almost identically, I would have to say. So moving on to the next step, get rid of my video camera here. And we can move on to the FEM part. I'm going to save this real fast. Okay, so now that we have saved it, we can come down here and switch over to the FEM workbench. And for this part, I'm going to need an analysis container. And then we're going to need a material. And this particular tuning fork, I know, is made out of some type of aluminum. Uh, so we'll choose uh, aluminum 6061T6, which is probably not what this tuning fork is made out of. That's kind of like an industrial aluminum, but it's probably close enough. I guess we'll see. And then we need some boundary conditions. So for this, I'm just going to grab this one boundary condition that's fixed, and I'm going to fix this ball on the end of it. And my thinking behind this is when you when you grab this tuning fork normally, right, the reason it stops producing its sound is because your hand here acts as a damper. And I want to, you know, simulate that kind of dampering bit. Um, so I'm not going to lock the whole handle, just this kind of end bit. And hopefully that simulates that kind of thing. I guess we will we will see if it ends up too far away. We might try running the simulation again with, you know, this portion locked or maybe this portion locked. We'll see. So now that we have that, we need to get ourselves a mesh, and we'll see what this spits out. I guess I would like to see a mesh that's about four across thickness wise, four in diameter. And C1234. So it appears to have spit out a mesh that's approximately correct. And we'll see how well it handles this section. Um, I would expect this section maybe has some difficulties looking at it like this because um, the nodes look a little bit funky there. But I guess we will see. That section, that section looks okay. Um, this section is a pretty tight corner, and uh, you know, I guess we will we will see. Um, so I believe we have everything we need there. So switch it over to frequency, and what this does is it's going to compute a bunch of uh, eigenvalues and and math stuff and it's going to spit out a bunch of uh, frequency modes, and, and we'll see what those look like. So write the file and run it, and we'll see if it likes it. It should be a relatively fast simulation, since this is a relatively simple part and a relatively simple mesh. There's not a crazy number of nodes. And it looks like it had no troubles with meshing any of those sections. It spit out an answer here. So what these modes are is this first mode is the natural mode. And then from this point on, they go up with frequency. And I believe by default, uh, it spits out 10 modes. But of course, you can come over here to the solver and you can change it. There's a variety of settings here. Um, so you want more modes. You want low limit, high limit. These are frequencies, I believe. And, you know, stuff like that. So we can see this first frequency here, 248 hertz. Uh, it's not quite the 440 hertz that my uh, tuning fork is rated for. Let's see if... Uh, 
we get any of these being approximately 440. So these uh, mode 3 and 4 are close. So we can double click on these and we can see how it's bending in particular. Um, looks like this first mode is not actually the forks bending, which is kind of interesting. So maybe my maybe my earlier assumption with leaving this section down here um, unconstrained is not a great assumption. Okay. So I'm going to change this slider max because that is pretty crazy. Um, maybe maybe slider max of one. So we can see this, this first mode is the tuning fork kind of vibrating as a whole this way and that way. Um, and let's take a look at, at the second mode. I expect that it's the same thing but horizontal. And yeah, there you can see this is the same thing but, uh, but horizontal. So then mode three is the kind of, uh, let's see, I guess arms like splaying out forward and backward um, mode. And then mode four is the arms splaying out horizontally. And I think this is typically the mode that uh, tuning forks operate in, is this kind of horizontal in and out, you know, mode. So let's come over here and let's check the frequency on that. So it's it's very close. So we are only off by 6.5 hertz. Um, and I expect that if we set our boundary conditions properly, these modes one through three would actually disappear. They aren't real in, you know, the sense that uh, we were describing this. And interesting, let's uh, look at modes five. So I guess this is kind of the whole fork going left and right again. Uh, let's see, mode six uh, is kind of this buckling mode, uh, very similar to mode one. Mode seven is the, I believe this is kind of the other, you know, this is kind of interesting because you've got this, uh, it's like the buckling version of mode uh, mode three. So quite, quite interesting. I'm not sure if there's, you know, a crazy amount this is the buckling version of mode two or mode four. Sorry. Um, I'm not sure if there's, you know, a crazy amount of uh, things that can be determined from these higher order modes, but they, they sure are interesting to look at. Um, so now, I guess now that we know that it, it does work, um, let's come back here and let's mess with the constraints and see if we can get rid of modes one through three. So come over here, fixed constraint, and I'm just going to add this face and rerun it. And I'm going to delete the results. Let's see, goodbye, goodbye. Alrighty, write this and we will run it. And we will see if we get uh, anything better. This particular type of analysis is good to know um, if you're doing engineering things. You know, maybe not if you're 3D printing stuff at home. You won't ever run into this. But, you know, if you're, if you're worried about deflections or, you know, you're building a bridge. Famously, there was a, uh, a bridge that was built with uh, one of the resonant modes near the frequency that people took steps. And as a result, the bridge, you know, became quite uh, swayy as people were walking across it as its first mode resonated with their footsteps. So um, pretty, pretty crazy stuff. It's, it's an important thing to look out for. Um, maybe not super useful for an average person, but Let's see. So mode one here, 
add did not change. Let's see, quite interesting, quite interesting. It looks like the, the first mode, um, so it did change. Um, now it's the whole fork going up as opposed to just this, I guess it's, it's let, excuse me, let me start that over. Um, it is just this forward part of the fork that's bending up as opposed to the whole fork, um, which is what we would expect if, you know, nothing changed. The second one, um, again, very similar. And this third mode is, you know, almost identical. The fourth mode is, again, the typical uh, mode that we were expecting to get. So maybe I'll try one more time. And maybe I will, let's see. I will lock this section, um, but I'll leave this big section free, and hopefully this will act like a damper. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. But quite interesting, you know, your your results are only as good as your, uh, your information. It might be that we modeled it slightly wrong, or it might be that there's some kind of interesting tuning that the company does. Um, when they manufacture this thing, maybe in this area. I noticed that this particular part of the fork is kind of odd in its construction. It looks to be um, not connected via normal means. Like I can see the, the this portion thing here. And then I can see the like handle bit. Um, and there's an obvious gap in there. So it might be that we're modeling that portion incorrectly, you know, maybe there's some type of steel bar or something in there, or maybe some aluminum bar glue, who knows. But at the very least, we can uh, do ourselves the honor of running the simulation one more time, seeing if anything changes. So I'm going to remove this face and add in this face. Let's see, remove, and then add this face. Okay. And we will see if this gets rid of the modes, the extra modes. And come over here, write the file, and run it. So in particular, um, areas where, you know, you'd be watching out for things vibrating is if you were, if you were doing some type of heavy machinery um, and you ended up with like really low modes, like one or two hertz, like it'll just like tear the machines apart. It's, it's like the craziest thing. Um, let's see. So it looks like we're not we're not getting rid of that. Um, let's see. Yeah, everything looks approximately the same. Um, let's see. It's possible that there is a dampening constraint, although I don't recall seeing one. But I will take a quick look here earlier. Well, I don't see one. Um, so I guess I will just end the video here. But uh, we were able to simulate the mode that this happens to be in. I do suspect that the dampening that occurs on this section is the reason that we're not seeing the proper first mode, um, but is interesting, is interesting. So I will, I will leave it there, and I hope you have a nice day.